Hello, ladies and gentlemen, this is Timothy here with Mana Rocks, and welcome to part one of what I hope will be an ongoing series, where I'm going to list the number one best card for EDH from every set in Magic. Now, that's a huge undertaking, not only because there are just so many Magic expansions in existence, but also because there are just a vast variety of EDH playable cards and format staples littered throughout Magic history. So narrowing down each set to just one all-star card is going to take some thought and research. As such, we're going to take this series in chunks, starting with standard block sets first. That means standard expansions from the first expansion ever, Arabian Nights, all the way up to current day Theros Beyond Death. That also means no alpha or core sets, no commander sets, and no supplementary product like Battle Bond or Conspiracy. We'll cover all those products and sets in a separate set of videos once we've made it through Magic's 80 plus standard expansions. For our first video, we'll be covering Magic's earliest 10 expansions from Arabian Nights to Visions. A couple rules for this video. First, in order for a card to be considered the best EDH print-in from a given set, it must be originally printed in that set. This will avoid having a reprint pop up as the best card from multiple sets. Second, the card cannot currently be on the EDH ban list. This is kind of a no-brainer rule, but it wouldn't make sense to crown a card a best of card when you can't even technically play it in the format. Third, we're not taking budget into consideration for this video. Some cards don't see play simply because they are generally unaffordable or hard to find, but I didn't want to exclude them from this list for that reason, so we will not take card prices into consideration for the purposes of this series. Fourth, we're looking for ubiquitous, well-rounded cards and format-defining cards. For the most part, we won't be selecting part of a two-card combo as a best of card unless its impact on Commander is profound, and we're looking at cards that see play across a wide variety of decks or give a certain color or strategy a significant edge. And finally, note that this is a list comprising my own personal opinions, and as is the case with opinions, people are bound to disagree. Feel free to voice your own opinions in the comments below, but let's all agree to keep it clean, constructive, and respectful. And with that being said, let's jump into our first 10 sets. Arabian Nights is the perfect place to kick things off because it highlights something interesting about the early years of Magic expansions. The vast majority of early Magic sets have some of the worst card designs you'll see from the game, but amongst the chaff and filler of earliest sets are some of the most broken and egregious card effects that you can find in the game. Arabian Nights only has a total of 78 cards, and you can count on one hand the number of cards that could have a reasonable impact on an EDH game. You might not see them often, but cards like Drop of Honey and Diamond Valley are powerful cards that rarely grace EDH tables due to their price tags, and while we said budget considerations would not be taken into account for this video, it just so happens that a lot of the best cards from early Magic sets are also quite expensive. And speaking of expensive, if you want the best EDH card from Arabian Nights, you can drop a cool grand or so on a copy of Bazaar of Baghdad, which honestly I thought was on the ban list before making this list. The average player's collection won't be sporting a copy of Bazaar, but when someone plays it, it's probably bad news. Bazaar is a powerful way to enable the graveyard, and we're talking about a format where your graveyard is basically a second hand. If you're looking to turbo through your deck while filling up the graveyard, Bazaar of Baghdad will do it and easily takes my spot for best EDH card from Arabian Nights. Magic's first set was focused on flavor and storytelling with its top-down designs, but the second expansion, Antiquities, decided to focus its attention on a core element of magic. Artifacts. Antiquities was Magic's first artifact set, and nearly every card in the set either was an artifact or interacted with artifacts in some way. For example, Antiquities gave us Triskelion, which would later become a popular combo piece in Mike and Ike EDH decks. We also got Tron Lands for the first time, as well as the absurdly powerful Mishra's Workshop, a land that, for the cost of an arm and a leg, can tap for 3 mana, which can only be used to cast artifacts. Again, another expensive card that I had just assumed was banned in Commander, but turns out it's not, just no one owns a copy. That being said, I think there are a couple EDH staples that originated in Antiquities that beat Mishra's Workshop, as our best card from the set. Antiquities gave us the first printing of Strip Mine, an all-purpose land hoser that helps keep in check some of the more absurd mana-producing lands we'll see later on in this series. Strip Mine, while replaceable with cards like Wasteland or Ghost Quarter, is a nice checks and balances type card to have in the format, and EDH is better off for having it than not. But 
above strip mine, I have to give the nod to Ashnod's Altar. A centerpiece of many of the more universal combos you'll see across the EDH format. On top of being a generic artifact with high mana producing potential, it's a free sacrifice outlet that enables tons of infinite loops. Think Brea or Nim Death Mantle combos. Sure, Strip Mine is a powerful answer and a great reactive card, but Ashnod's Altar is a poster child for combo decks and degenerate commander loops, and so Ashnod's Altar gets my pick for best EDH card from Antiquities. Now we get to Legends, the set which would later contribute much to the identity of EDH as it developed into its own format. On top of introducing legendary creatures into the mix, Legends specifically released the Elder Dragons, from which the name Elder Dragon Highlander was derived. Sure, none of them are close to the top of our list, but they deserve the shout out nonetheless. In fact, none of Legends' most powerful cards are even creatures, which highlights a point that is often made about early magic and how creatures paled in comparison to the powerful spells and lands you could be playing. Thankfully, Caracas will never see the light of day in our format, but Legends also gave us the Tabernacle at Pendril Vale, another pricey but spicy land that can entirely shut out creature decks. On top of that, we have Concordant Crossroads, which for a single green mana grants haste to everything. There's Land Tax and its ugly Hamburglar art, which helps white decks hit land drops in a format where white is not at its best. And Legends even gave us Mana Drain, which despite being printed at a time where Mana Burn was relevant, has become a strictly better counterspell for the purposes of EDH, and is easily one of the best counterspells ever printed. Can you guess which Legends card I have above all of these? Go ahead and pause the video for a second and see if you can figure it out without looking it up. You got it? Think you know what it is? Alright, well, I decided that Sylvan Library deserved the top spot for a couple of reasons. While I think some would argue in favor of Mana Drain, it is what I like to call a tryhard card. Obviously good, but not necessary. In many cases, unless you are a strict CEDH player, a simple counterspell will do the job that Mana Drain will. Sure, Mana Drain has some massive upside, but at the end of the day, it's a counterspell through and through, and the format is rife with counterspells. Sylvan Library, on the other hand, provides green with card advantage, card selection, and card draw, and does so in a way that green doesn't typically have access to. Don't get me wrong, green has gotten powerful draw spells in recent years, but its strength lies in creature-based draw power, whereas Sylvan Library gives you card selection, and for a bit of a life investment, repeated card draw. Sylvan Library is peak card draw for green, and in my opinion, deserves the trophy for best EDH card from Legends. Next up on our list is a set that I know very little about, and while I was hard-pressed to find even a smattering of cards that were worth talking about, the dark gave me a few gems in the rough. It's a weird set full of color hosers and strange designs from a time where magic hadn't quite established which colors are capable of doing what, but honestly, if you had asked me before doing my research for this video uh, to name a card from the dark, I would have been like, I guess Blood Moon? And sure, Blood Moon's a noteworthy card. It could easily make its own list of cards that get people's blood boiling in a commander game since it often has a board lock effect on non-red decks or on players with greedy mana bases. But some decks don't care about Blood Moon at all, and sometimes it actually backfires on the person playing it, not to mention that there are certainly better mana denial cards in existence if your plan is to stop a table from having fun. So the best card from the dark wasn't Blood Moon, and what is it? I thought about Felwar Stone for a moment, which is a fantastic 2-mana mana rock, but it's recently been outclassed by the addition of Arcane Signet to the format. Not that it's bad, it's just not amazing. So that left me with the only other card from the dark worth talking about, Maze of Ith. Similar to Bazaar of Baghdad, Maze of Ith is a non-mana producing land that functions more as a spell than an actual land and thus is harder to interact with. It taps to remove creatures from combat, and while there are similar effects nowadays with cards like Spires of Arazka, Labyrinth of Scophos, Mystifying Maze, etc., Maze is the least complicated to use. In fact, when new cards with similar effects get printed, we call them the new Maze of Ith from the set. And when you've got your own category of cards named after you, you probably deserve some amount of praise. And therefore, Maze of Ith gets the top spot for the dark. Alright, up to this point we've had a few contenders for the top spot in each set, and I can see there being some controversial picks from set to set, but now we must face the brick wall in front of us, Magic's fifth expansion, Fallen Empires. I mean, just look at that logo. I started this video by saying many of Magic's early sets are essentially garbage fires with a few diamonds in the rough, but not Fallen Empires. 
the set just has nothing, <laughs> and I'm sure some people are fond of some cards from the set, but I really had to scrap together what I could to even have something worth talking about for this video. Perhaps the most iconic card from the set is Himda Turok, but you don't really see that card in EDH, except in rare 1v1 circles. Fallen Empires gave us High Tide, I suppose, which does something, sure, but even as a combo piece, it wouldn't grace the top spots on a list of great EDH combo cards. And there's also Breeding Pit, which is a defensible commander card, but nothing worth writing home about. I would absolutely love to hear what people think is the best EDH card from Fallen Empires. Let me know in the comments if I'm missing something, but I'm coming at you all left field with Night Soil, and not because it's an all-star game winning card, but because it's enough better than all the other nonsense cards in the set that I think it deserves the spot. I'm expecting some people have never even seen Night Soil, but for two green mana, you get an enchantment that lets you eat creatures from graveyards in order to make Saproling tokens. Sure, it's not that different from Necrogenesis, but in a green deck that's looking for graveyard hate and can't play black, it does the trick. And it's as good as any other card from this set, so reluctantly, somehow, we're given Night Soil the title of best EDH card from Fallen Empires. Taking a deep breath, we can move away from the embarrassment that is Fallen Empires and step into Ice Age, which is not only a fairly large set with 383 cards, but also home to some of EDH's favorites. When I think Ice Age and EDH, I tend to think of the blue cards, namely Brainstorm and Mystic Remora. These are both respectable cards, but in my opinion, they're more along the lines of strong playables than full-on staples. Brainstorm, while great and flexible, has a certain stigma that makes people think it's more powerful than it is, most likely to its prevalence across the other Eternal formats. It's still powerful, don't get me wrong, but at the end of the day, it's a fancy cantrip, and without being combined with shuffle or self-mill effects, it's nothing spectacular. Mystic Remora has some serious card draw potential, but savvy players can navigate a game in order to make a Mystic Remora less effective than it could be, and people who play Remora will often waste turns paying for cumulative upkeep instead of simply getting rid of it. Ice Age also has another much-hated card in Yockel Hops, a 6-mana red sorcery that eliminates all lands, creatures, and artifacts from the game, and usually leads to uninteractive, drawn-out games with a few lost friendships thrown into the mix. And let's not forget about Glacial Chasm, an annoying tech card that prevents the owner from taking damage, giving them time to set up a combo or unbreakable board state, albeit with a cost. Most players find ways to recycle the Chasm or remove counters in order to circumvent the cumulative upkeep, making it difficult for players to kill them in the process. Process. Here's another pause moment for the audience. If none of these cards took the top spot from Ice Age, what did? Go ahead, pause the video again. You think you got it? Alright, good. Well, as good as some of these other cards are, they don't beat the raw power of Necropotence, an insane card advantage machine that highlights how effectively life total can be used as a resource in EDH. Necropotence is such a powerful tool for black decks to outdraw even the best blue card draw spells, and while it's costly to do so, there's something to be said for raw card advantage on a 3 mana enchantment. It even circumvents effects that would prevent extra card draw, things like Narsa, Parter of Veils, or Notion Thief, since it doesn't technically draw extra cards. Card advantage and mana advantage are king in EDH, and Necropones has card advantage covered in spades, taking my spot for best EDH card from Ice Age. Look, I won't fault you if you want to go ahead and skip to the next section, because Homelands is a god-awful mess of a magic set. Fallen Empires was bad, but more in a nothing-really-stands-out sort of way. Homelands is just a whole lot of nothing with some truly bizarre things going on here. Just, just check this out for a minute. In Homelands, we've got some plus two, plus two counters floating around. We're cheating Minotaur creatures into play. We're making some kelp tokens, I guess, for intruder alarm combos. We've got a summon bodyguard up in this joint and what has to be the most atrocious mana fix in lands I've ever seen. It's just a complete mess. So naturally, I had some trouble picking out noteworthy cards to talk about. I mean, we've got Sengir Autocrat. That's not necessarily a bad card, right? It's a creature that makes three tokens, so there's some use for it right there. And I guess you can take out your opponent's surf tokens in the mirror match. I guess? I don't know. Okay, I'll level with you though. There's a clear contender in Homelands, and while it's not exactly a powerhouse, it makes its way into people's decks here and there. That would be Merchant Scroll, two mana blue sorcery that tutors up a blue instant and puts it in your hand. Sure, it's outclassed by other tutors, which we will undoubtedly see throughout this series, but as far as a Homelands is concerned, you get what you get. Let's move on, shall we? 
washing our hands clean of homelands, we get to talk about alliances, which is interesting because I bet if I stopped and asked you to think of a card from alliances, we'd all be thinking of the same card, right? Well, we've got a clear winner for sure, but let's talk about some of the standouts from the set. Arcane Denial is a much-loved counterspell for EDH. It has a real drawback that I think people tend to overlook, but people are much less mad about getting their spell Arcane Denialed than getting straight-up counterspelled. It's got that group hug feel to it, like, hey, sorry, I can't let that resolve, but at least you get to draw some cards, right? Thalmond Glaciers also saw print in Alliances, which is not only a great card for sure in land drops throughout a long, grindy game, but also a perfect mix of flavor and function due to how slowly it works. We've also got Phyrexian Devourer and Helm of Obedience, which are both at the forefront of some particularly janky combos. Not first place cards by any stretch, but worth the mentions. And then we've got our winner. Not only the best card from Alliances, but one of the best cards, if not the best card in all of Magic. Let's pause one last time and see if you guessed it. What is the best EDH card from Alliances? All good? You think you got it down? Well... Obviously, the title of best EDH card from Alliances has to be Stormcrow. A boon to all blue and bird decks alike, Stormcrow first graced our magic sleeves and Alliances and touched the hearts of players everywhere. A 1-2 flyer for just 2 mana, okay, it's Force of Will, sorry Stormcrow, maybe another list. All jokes aside, Force of Will takes my place for the actual best card from Ice Age. Again, it's not necessary for a casual player to play Force of Will, but it can be a pivotal piece of interaction if you're looking to protect a combo or make sure you can interact with opponents while still tapping out to develop your own game plan. It's one of those cards where I typically tell people it's not worth buying because it is a little pricey, but if you already own one, it is a significant upgrade to most counter spells in the format. It can't be overstated how good free interaction can be in EDH, and for that reason, Force of Will takes our spot as best EDH card from Ice Age. Next up on our list is Mirage, which is a nice middling set with a decent amount of fluff and filler, but just enough to wet the lips of the average commander player. As some honorable mentions, we've got Lion's Eye Diamond, which along with the newly printed Underworld Breach and Brain Freeze, produces a loop that can mill your entire library. Hall of Gemstone is another Blood Moon-esque effect that shuts down colors one turn at a time, but also gives players a bit more flexibility as to how it's going to affect their mana base. And of course, since EDH does in fact include competitive EDH and all that entails, we'd be remiss not to mention Flash, which is just a messed up magic card allowing you to get the enter the battlefield and death triggers of a creature in your hand for just two mana, often leading to degenerate combos alongside Protean Hulk and other nonsense cards. I'm more focused on casual play in general, so Flash would never make my list here, but I don't want to leave it out completely either. So out of complete transparency, we're going to kind of cheat for our Mirage entry. Mirage brought us an incomplete cycle of tutors, which in many ways define their individual portions of the color pie and give their individual colors an irreplaceable tool. I'm of course talking about Worldly, Enlightened, and Mystical Tutor, which for one mana, can fetch up a creature, an artifact or enchantment, or an instant or sorcery, respectively, and put it on top of the library. While not as all-encompassing as a straight-up demonic tutor, the instant speed nature of these tutors let you play both proactively or reactively, depending on the situation. Do you need an answer to what your opponent's doing? Tutor up an answer and draw it on your turn. Coast is clear, tutor up your win con or combo piece and draw it on your turn. The versatility of instant speed tutors cannot be stated enough, and while I think the best of the bunch would likely be Mystical Tutor, I find them close enough in function that I'm giving them all the top spot. And that brings us right into our final set for the video. Visions is another set with slim pickings as far as EDH cards go, but the best of the bunch is nothing to scoff at. A lot of what Visions offers are cards that have been power crept over the years, like how Ravenous Chupacabra is a great replacement for Necrotal, or how the Ravnica Bounce Lands are generally more useful than the Karoos outside of monocolored decks, but there's still some power lying within Visions if you look for it. Necromancy is a standout reanimation effect, and while it's not as efficient as an animate dead or a straight up reanimate, it has an instant speed clause that gives it an extra layer of usefulness over other alternatives. Natural Order also saw print in Visions, and while admittedly I don't see it get played in EDH circles too often, it's a powerful tutor effect that lets green decks turbo out some of their more powerful creatures. But if you know Visions, you should be familiar with the card that's going to make the top of the list, and it's a nice follow-up from our previous pick from Mirage. For Visions, 
Vampiric Tutor is a clear first place winner. Everything we said about the previous Mirage Tutors is on full display here. One mana, instant speed, reactive and proactive given the circumstances, but Vampiric Tutor is more versatile given that it can fetch any card from the deck and at a meager cost of two life. If we were making a list of top tutors in EDH, the top spot would be a controversial toss up between Demonic Tutor and Vampiric Tutor, but Visions only has the one, and so we've got to give the crown to Vampiric Tutor for best EDH card from Visions. And that's going to go ahead and do it. The first 10 magic expansions down with many more to go. Do you agree with my picks? Are there any you would move around? Or are there any cards I omitted entirely that deserve mention? Let me know in the comments below and feel free to make any predictions for future sets. Next time we'll be looking at the next 10 sets from Weatherlight to Prophecy and we'll see what EDH goodies those sets have in store for us. This project took a while to make and I'm tinkering with backgrounds and editing tools and things of that nature so feedback is welcome. You can support the channel by subscribing below or finding us on Twitter at MTG underscore Thanks for watching. This has been Timothy with Manorox. I'll see you all next time.